friends, I am packing for Oman. And I thought I would film my packing process with you because it can always be a little bit daunting and confusing when you are packing for your archeological dig. I've compiled a list, separated it into subjects so you can see each one and kind of make sure you get the essentials for each area like tools, health and wellness, miscellaneous, clothing, everything like that. And then what I've also done with this packing list is separate it into three separate categories. So you have, you know, the basic pack Package, everything you need to just survive. I've added another one called uh, Pimp Your Dig, so that way you can add all these fun little things that maybe you didn't think about or things that, you know, maybe make you feel a little bit more pampered. And then the top tier is, of course, the Kennedy package. Maybe I should do something more archaeological with that. The Schliemann package? We're gonna call the Schliemann package just because it kind of sounds dirty as well. Uh, but <laughs> that one is kind of like the top tier. So it has everything you need, everything you don't need, uh, but it can all still fit in a suitcase. So what we're gonna do in this video is that I'm gonna go through all of the categories with you and then I'm gonna show you each level of packing to see the difference, see how much uh, space it takes up size, what you need. Let's get packing. Okay guys, so first thing is first, I'm gonna talk about the tools of the trade, the things that you should bring with you while you are going on your excavation. A lot of digs actually have most of the tools that you need. It's kind of your own judgment based on these certain tools that you may or may not bring. So don't kind of waste luggage space if you are already going to have uh, tools waiting for you. Also don't waste your money if you don't think you're gonna be using them in the future. The first thing that you are going to need, of course, is a dig bag. This bag is going to go with you everywhere. Every morning on site, this is what's gonna be on your back. It's gonna have everything you need in it to make sure that you survive that morning uh, and that you are well equipped. It makes you look cool too, because you're just like ready for adventure. So now, of course, once you have the bag, you now have to fill it with things to make sure you can walk the walk as well as talk the talk. Item number one, probably the most important thing you could ever have on site with you is a water bottle, a refillable one. Be very careful when you are in other countries though to make sure that you're not drinking the tap water if the tap water is not drinkable. Make sure that you are staying hydrated because if you are not, you will become the most unendurable person to be around. I have been dehydrated on site. You are just not sweating, you're suffering, you're making everyone else suffer around you. Just don't be that person. And then also you're just gonna die when you get back. And my number two go-to always, no matter what, is my Swiss army knife. Uh, I'm super basic girl. I bought this at Urban Outfitters. It's so pretty and I, I don't go anywhere without it because it literally has everything you need, right? And I cannot tell you how many times people have just been like, Raven, I need your knife. It's just super useful to have right in your pockets. So you can be like, yeah, bro, what'd you need? Off you go. End of story. You made friends forever. Next is your trowel. If you have a trowel, if you want to have your own trowel on site, I highly recommend it. It's kind of nice. Most places will have trowels for you. And also you might not be troweling the whole time, depending on the type of soil that you are uh, excavating in. Everyone is very partial to their own types of trowels. A lot of people will argue about this. I've tried it on my Instagram and they have, uh, there, there was quite an argument about which was the best trowel. Everyone seems to be very partial to these, this Marshalltown trowels. And these are kind of like the ones that people say like Marshalltown or GTFO. So I'm not sure about you guys and your preferences, but tell me about what you like with your trowels, big or small, certain brands, whatever you like, down in the comments below. So then we can start like a conversation. People that don't know about trowels can kind of do their own research and find their own amazing best friend like we all have. Since you'll be using these tools a lot, you're working with your hands all day, you're pickaxing, you're shoveling, you're carrying dirt from one place to the another. Some people really like to excavate with gloves on. And I'm kind of like, take them or leave them with the gloves essentially, because I like kind of using my own hands. I need the feel of everything, but I also like to have them on me just in case anyone else needs gloves. In the bag, those go. A digital camera, mostly if you are a trench supervisor. If you are not a trench supervisor, you probably don't have to take daily photos of your thing but it's always nice to have one also just to like collect memories other photography things that you might need that are also kind of nice to have for yourself uh, this is a photo card here this is really cool I got this for free at the AIA conference from Durham University it was probably like the best freebie 
I ever got. Another really important thing for documentation in archaeology is the North Arrow. Now this one is kind of a special one because it has my logo on it. Look at that. Again, it's not a mandatory thing if you're just going to be a volunteer excavator. This is more for when you're taking uh, pictures of finds and things. I need to paint it still. I'm going to make it white and black. And since we're talking more about documentation stuff at the moment, the other thing that you always have to bring with you is a notebook. You have to bring a log book. Every day you should be writing about what you're doing, what you're finding. You can also draw out your own plans, your own stratigraphical stuff. Uh, it's just for your own notes. And then you have memories and your own little special like dig diary and that's fun. So that's the case. Step one, inside of a pencil case, you need pencils, you need a tape measure, an eraser, and a sharpener. The most important thing that always gets lost on site, you will become best friends with whoever, with, with everyone really, if you bring Sharpies. You're always gonna need Sharpies on site to kind of write out, first of all, your fine labels. Someone's always gonna take your Sharpies, so hide one for backups when they all disappear. This is just twine, more of a, a polypropylene twine, so it's really, really strong. You might see that people use it a lot when they're mapping out their trenches and things like that, measuring stuff. So it's always good to have it on hand, but also it's great for when you wanna make your own laundry line, right? Your own little drying line outside of the dig house because you're gonna be doing your laundry by hand in the sink or in the shower. And it's just nice to have on hand. It's very, you know, it's very lightweight. It's a fun color. You can even make friendship bracelets with all of your trench buddies, you know? Now, finally, to wrap up the tools segment, these little things that I really like to have on me, especially if you're dealing with a lot of ceramics or ceramics analysis, cleaning, things like that, are brushes. You're gonna need a soft brush if you're dealing with special finds. You know, if you're digging, you need to just like they do in all the movies, right? You don't do it very often, but it's always good to have. This is also the conservator in me, always having brushes to make sure you can really see what you're doing. And also, again, if you're doing any very careful excavation, things like that, you either want bamboo picks, or again, for me as a conservator, dental tools. They have all different ones and styles, you know? I feel like a beauty blogger now like this. There we are, yes, ooh. And yeah, they're really useful, especially if you're just getting into the, some harder dirt. You need that extra dexterity. Squeezers, just in case you're dealing with any very special finds that are really small. Let's move on now to the health and wellness section of the packing list. Item number one is sunscreen. Sunscreen of a very high SPF as well, minimum 30 SPF. You need to protect yourself out there because you are out there in the hot sun, digging all day long. Honestly, it's the best thing for you just keep reapplying it every break that you have number two toilet paper always bring toilet paper i heard a really great tip on twitter from i believe it was robin lacy where you just pull out the inner tube here i don't know if i can do it whoops so then you can squish it a lot easier and then you're going to want to put it in a plastic bag to make sure it is protected from the dirt because you know you're putting that on your butt. Ta-da! Most dig sites will not have a bathroom. You're gonna be squatting in the middle of nowhere behind a bush. So make sure you have at least some of the comforts of home with you. Now ladies, I know popping a squat is not the most comfortable thing. It's always awkward. There's wildlife around you. You don't want ants off your butt. I'm gonna show you something that may be TMI for some people or you know, the boys. I'm talking about the shiwi. Yes, this makes you pee standing up. Best 12 bucks I ever spent. You can go stand behind a bush, pee like a man, and not have to worry about squatting, getting dirty, falling over, losing your balance. You keep it, of course, in its own separate baggie. Other things you are going to need while on site is bug spray. Depending on where you are, there's gonna to be tons of bugs. And if you're like me, they love you. Another vital thing on site to have with you are baby wipes. They're really great for when you're having a little bit of a breakfast break. You know, you can wash your hands nicely, kind of get all the dirt off your face at the end of the day. It makes you feel like more of a human being until you get to a shower. You also then might want some antibacterial hand gel as well after the bathroom or when you're digging, just to make you feel a little bit cleaner when you're eating. Because we're dealing with tools and we're digging and we're exerting ourselves, you're gonna need a first aid kit. Pack it full of bandages, gauze, whatever you need, just in case anybody gets injured on site. I'd also put in some Advil, some painkillers. You're that person with Advil, you're gonna make 
lots of friends. Now, I mentioned earlier the importance of having your water bottle. And with that, I also really recommend bringing some of these, these uh, hydration packs. You're gonna be sweating a lot. You're gonna be losing a lot of salt, a lot of electrolytes. And if you're a vegetarian or a vegan like myself, you will not be getting all of those salts and um, vitamins back naturally in the same amounts that you will be exerting them. They taste gross, they make you poop, but then you just feel so much better. And that way you also don't have to douse all of your food with excessive amounts of salt and kill your taste buds. And on that note, always have snacks. Snacks, 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 snacks. We got nuts with dried fruit. We got some trail mix going. I always bring protein bars on site with me as well uh, to the digs because most countries that I dig in don't quite understand the concept of uh, vegetarianism or veganism. And a fun, really cool thing that my friend Kristen did on the site in Greece this summer was actually bring in protein powder. And I would put this in my coffee during breakfast. A dig essentially is like going to the gym for eight hours and you need to make sure you're taking care of yourself there. Lotion because you are getting dirty and that really does dry out your skin. So bring yourself some lip balm, earplugs. I found out uh, recently that I'm quite the impressive of snorers on archaeological sites. I do not snore normally, but I do snore after a day of digging. So I always feel bad for my roommates. So I make sure there are enough for everyone just in case they need them to fall asleep at night. These, these lovely wrist braces, this ankle brace uh, and things because I am actually a very broken person. So it's always nice to have these. A quick dry towel. The quick dry ones, because they're very small, they don't take up a lot of space in your suitcase. Last year, my friend Anna also brought with her a travel yoga mat on site. So this was on my Christmas list this year because I thought it was ingenious of her because you're just putting yourself through so much physical exertion that you just feel stiff and sore. So I'm gonna be bringing this to Oman with me so I can do some amazing sun salutations at 5 a.m. before the sun comes up. You're always gonna want to bring a sleeping bag. So some places will have a lot of, you know, beds already set up for you. They'll maybe have some sheets and some pillows, but you might need a, like an extra blanket or something like that. Let's get into what you're actually gonna be wearing on site and what to pack for that. The number one thing to bring with you is a hat. It can be any hat you want, a baseball cap, it can be an Indiana Jones cap, it can be whatever you need, but it needs to make sure that it's covering your head and also covering the back of your neck and your face. Mwah. Love it. I also like to have one of these guys with me at all times, these um, kind of big scarves for your head. You can wrap them in a million different ways. I'm sure you've seen on my Instagram. And you're all set. You got your head covered, you got your hair covered, a buff or some sort of bandana. So I always keep one, for example, on my wrist like this so it is easily accessible. You can just you know, wipe you off if you're sweating. You can also put it around your neck and have it above your nose like this if you're doing something really dusty. So I always bring at least two or three of them because they do get dirty and you gotta wash them quite regularly. A sweater, because sometimes in the mornings it can get quite chilly just to keep warm until you are either sweating enough with the pickaxe or the sun has come up to try and eat you alive. Time for the excavation clothes, oh yes. I love digging with long pants on just because it's a little bit nicer. You don't get yourself all dirty. You don't scratch up your legs. And also they have tons of pockets. Always make sure you have tons of pockets. I love these pants. They have every pocket that you need on them. And to be honest, the more you cover yourself, the cooler you're going to be. And then I also bring long sleeve tops. Sometimes I have dug in a tank top with, but always with my long pants still. Other clothing, of course, you cannot go anywhere without your sunglasses. I always bring a bathing suit with me. This is my my sexy one piece bathing suit. Oh yeah. I'm usually digging where places, you know, where there are places that you can swim. If there aren't places you can swim, or if you're digging in the tundra, uh, don't bring a bathing suit. I also just like to bring either uh, one or two kind of like nicer outfits to be wearing once you are just out and about. And maybe if you want to go out for dinner one night, go out for a drink with some friends. Now let's get into the shoes, guys. Digging, I always wear these amazing guys, they're waterproof, they're really sturdy, they're fun. Oh, I like to be in a safer shoe, just also because I would pickaxe myself in the toe. 
I do always bring my Converse with me. These are more of like my adventuring shoes if we're going out somewhere. I also always bring a pair of flip flops, but they're always good for when you're dealing with communal bathrooms, communal showers. If you're going to a different country with a different plug, you're gonna need an adapter. Other things that I've always also brought with me are a power bar because there are never enough plugs for the amount of people staying in that room. A book or an e-reader, you're gonna find yourself with a lot of nice quiet time. It's just so peaceful there. Other things, even though it is 2020 and every phone has a flashlight on it, is a headlamp. They're useful and you need sometimes some light hands-free and it's just nice to have at night time so you're not bothering your roommates. Always bring a mini speaker or have someone with you that has a mini speaker because you're gonna wanna play some music. You're gonna wanna enjoy your time with everyone. And it's really nice to kind of share music and get to know everyone's musical taste. Bring an external battery. Um, and finally, if I haven't given you enough stuff to pack, I always bring one of these guys for my phone. You can use a find bag for your phone, but if you're gonna have your phone with you on site, you're gonna wanna protect it from the dust and the wet. So yeah, guys, those are the uh, main things that you should bring with you on a dig. I have encompassed everything that would be in the three levels of packing. So some of these obviously are not necessities. These are just nice things for me to have on site with me. So now I'm gonna show you the, uh, the bare necessities, the pimping up your ride, and the Schliemann experience to make sure you get the most out of your dig. Let's do it. All right, starting it off with the most basic package. You have your dig bag, then your hat, your water bottle, followed by the much needed sunscreen, bug spray, a first aid kit for all those nicks and bruises, then you got your hand sani gel, some pain pills, very, very much needed, the oh so sacred toilet paper, then you get your log book and all of the accoutrements that go with it, like your pencil sharpener, the pencils, the sharpies that are always needed, a good pen, your sunglasses, some power adapters, pen knife, some long pants, yeah, two pairs, some long sleeve shirts, and your dig shoes. There you have it. That's everything you need. The absolute bare basics to survive an archeological dig. Now, if you wanna add anything else, we're gonna go ahead and start pimping it up. Starting off with some dental tools, depending on the type of excavation you're doing, very, very much needed. Then we get some nice soft brushes up in there for some more delicate work. You get yourself your twine, your electrolyte packages, very, very important. And you, if you're broken like me, you definitely need some ankle braces, your shiwi, sleeping bag, tape measure, trowel, some buffs, and a kefia to cover your head. Ladies, sports bras, always very important. And then you got some gloves. I'm bringing my GoPro, my flip-flops, some more snacks. Oh yeah, nuts are great. Ooh, even more snacks. Let's just keep going along here with the snacks. Some more nuts, protein bars. Mmm, I like to snack. Got me some vitamins as well. My power bank, my lotion, my wet wipes. Then I got extra plastic bags, a sweater. Then you get also a little bit more fun stuff like your towel and your shoes all right these are my converse that's everything you need to pimp it up now let's go for the things that you absolutely don't need but if you have the space go for it like a travel yoga mat then you get your photo card up in there a headlamp your kobo something for your phone to keep the dust out i got a scraper some fancy clothes my bathing suit a north arrow for if you need it i'm bringing my laptop because i will be filming and editing while in oman so i need it earplugs, some extra ponytails, and that there is the Schliemann package. Everything you need and everything you don't need for your archeological adventure. So thanks for hanging out with me, you guys, while I do did all of my packing for Oman. I hope this really helped you guys figure out what you need for your digs. If you liked that video, go ahead and smash that like button down below, right over there. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button down there as well. Huge thanks again to all of my patrons over on Patreon. If you wanna support the YouTube channel, get some really cool behind the scenes access to some stuff, extra videos, free things like stickers, t-shirts, mugs, all that fun stuff, go ahead and click that link in my description below. And if you wanna hang out with me some more, go follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, all those fun places. And as always, stay dirty, my friends. Also, I think I should be wearing this hat for every single video I do from now on. Feel more legit. Too legit to quit. Okay, bye.